Hey guys, today I want to do a quick recap here of a BVR fight we did a while ago. It's two F-16s, Belgian F-16s against Venezuelan F-16s. Not that that matters, but um, it's going to be discussing some BVR tactics, beyond visual range stuff, uh, how to defeat missiles. Because I see a lot of comments of people being like, why don't missiles hit you, but you hit everyone else? Well, I'm going to explain that in this video here in the tact view. So if that kind of stuff interests you, uh, stay tuned. So this scenario was four people, myself included. Uh, there's no AI in this one. Everyone is a real person and we're just going over the tack view. If you want to see the full video, I will link that in the video description below. You can check that out, um, see the actual DCS footage and that would obviously include the tack view. Okay guys, let's go ahead and dive into the tack view here. All right, guys, let's do our tag view review. We got me and uh, Alpha Gator as the Venezuelan F-16s, and we got Musolo and AC-3 as the uh, Belgian F-16s. So you remember from the video, our tactic was to climb high, get fast, and fire some long-range missiles, and hopefully kill them right off the bat. And uh, the F-16 is one of the only aircraft in DCS, with the exception of the F-15, who's really capable of doing this. I think the F-16 is a little better at it than the, F uh, the F-15, but, you know, the F-15 has the advantage of more fuel. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the reason that you need to get fast is because, obviously, objects in motion stay in motion. So if you are flying Mach 1.5... When you fire your missile that missile comes off the rail at mach 1.5 and then it turns on its own you know rocket booster and it flies off and adds you know another three three and a half four mach to it so all of a sudden you have a missile that you know can reach out a lot further is traveling a lot faster and you're coming into the high altitude just because you also want the thinner air you want less friction and all that stuff so as we climb, uh, you can see our speed building to Mach 1.4. I'm almost at Mach 1.5 here. And uh, if we look at these guys, we got Musolo sitting at a Mach 1 and uh, AC3 looks like he's accelerating to Mach 1.4. This leads me to believe that Musolo is not an afterburner and it's very, very important in these situations that you be in burner because uh, that's the only way you're really gonna get up to Mach 1.5, all right? So here comes the first missile launch. I fire at um, AC3 and I fire at 55 miles, but it's, it's just because I'm a couple seconds late here. So right here is the launch. It's 55 miles at Mach 1.5. And Alpha Gator is gonna fire on his bandit at a Mach of 1.53, so he's a little bit faster than me, and he's gonna get up to 55 miles-ish as well, and there's his Fox 3. Okay, so now the two of us begin our left offset, and the reason we do that, we'll go ahead and get rid of these labels and this as well, and the reason we're doing this is because the incoming missile, all right, as it comes in, it's, it has a finite booster, a rocket, you know? So it only has so much fuel. At a certain point, it runs out and it has to travel with its own kinetic energy. And so when you force a missile to turn, you're actually bleeding its energy a little bit. So when you do a left offset, you create a situation where the missile has to lead you over here to hit you, right? This turn is gonna cause uh, bleeding of missile energy. The other thing you're actually doing is increasing the flight time of the missile, right? A straight line is always the fastest way to get to something. And if you can make it kind of like this, it becomes a longer distance that the missile has to travel, right? The longer distance means that it's got to deal with more drag, more friction, especially if you're dragging it down into denser air. And uh, obviously when you increase the flight time, there is a risk that the battery will die on the missile before it hits you. And that's really why you're doing these offset scenarios. I mean, those are the bigger reasons. And so we got our missiles going out. Let's speed this up just a little bit. And we'll put the labels back on. 
and you can see us diving. I'm hitting a Mach 1.7. Another reason you want to be really fast in these BVR fights, the faster you go, the more lead the missile has to pull. The more lead it has to pull, the more it has to turn, the more it has to turn, the more energy it bleeds, right? So you're putting all of these things together in one defensive maneuver. And you can see right here, let's look at the bandits and what they're doing. AC3 has decreased his altitude and he also offset just like we did. Musolo did not offset. And here he is firing his Fox 3 at a Mach 1.1 distance, 31 miles. It's a dangerous missile. It can be a dangerous missile. Um, also because he's sitting at about 40,000 feet here, but he's slow, he's high. And I guarantee you right here is where he heard the Pitbull Amram, which means he gets the RWR tone here <laughs> and instantly dead. A Mach 2.6 impact. <laughs> so he's very dead and we have no shoot here. So his mistake here was just the fact that he stayed in a high altitude and it's a good learning opportunity for everybody to remember that when you're flying against F-16s, they can do this to you. Um, what he should have done is at 30,000 to 40,000 feet, um, the MAR is 30 miles, okay? which means when he hit 30 miles to his bandit, he needed to, uh, not even this, he needed to dive because he's right at the, the edge of the mar. So forget this. He needs to dive straight down into denser air. It's the only way he's gonna survive. All right, so that was really his mistake there. And let's see how far he is from the bandit. He's 31 miles and, oh no, that's, I don't know who he was shooting at. If he was shooting at Gator, he, he actually, at 31 miles, he was right at the cusp of the Mar, man. That's the thing. I think at 40,000 feet, the Mars may be more than 30 miles, actually. I don't know, but AC3 survived, you know? So there's that. Let's see when he aborted. 33 was the difference. This is my missile. And boy, does that come close. Oh shit, that came close. <laughs> oh my God, it came within 253 feet of him. So he barely made it. Okay, so let's say at 40,000 feet, the Mar is 35 miles. Okay, 40,000 feet, 35 miles. 30,000 feet, 30 miles. Okay, so Musolo here is actually um, five miles inside the Mar. And AC3 is two miles inside the Mar. And we really have a two to three mile buffer on the Mar, which means we're giving an error of two to three miles. Um, that's how these are calculated so that if you mess it up, you have two to three miles to react, which goes by in seconds. And you can see that that's really what saves AC3 here from that missile. And it doesn't hit him and goes right by him and misses him by 200 feet. Now, uh, his wingman is now dead and there's this missile. It's just too far and it had no track off the rail. So it's just a waste. It's a dead missile. Okay. Now AC3 is all on his own down here now. He's doing a good job of respecting the Mar like that 16 miles a little bit of a far launch should have maybe pushed into 10 because um, even when I defend this missile it's not a very dangerous missile Mach 1.7 yeah whereas I get into yeah no I can't get much I so I get up to 10 so he fires at 16 I get up to 10 this missile is never going to hit him because he's already halfway. Well, he is cold. He's already cold. All right, so that missile has no chance of hitting him. So now as he recommits, he does this correctly where he comes off of me. He forces me defensive, recommits onto my wingman. 
so he does this well. But unfortunately for him, Alpha Gator's on the ball and he's already fired one at him, so he has no time to lock him up. He's already defensive. So he's been defensive for two turns now. And look at this. So as Alpha Gator goes cold, as he so watch this. Let's go back here. I'm hot, I fire, I go cold. Alpha Gator's in hot, he fires, goes cold. Look at me, I'm recommitting. Right? You see that recommit so we can you can see that this and meanwhile ac3 is just defending this whole time right and you can see okay so i'm recommitted alpha gator is recommitted and he's right behind me which means when i fire and i go cold he will fire by the time he goes cold i'll recommit right now at this point we're at eight miles seven miles and this band is just running for his life and he actually dropped his tanks here oh my god that explains a lot of things, bro. Um, so he drops his tanks, recommits, comes to recommit. Honestly, at this point, when you're cold and there's a bandit seven miles off your tail like this, um, you have no chance. You have to just fly straight until it's over for you. Anything you do from here is going to result in you getting killed. All right. So he turns back in and right here, this is the part where Alpha Gator said, hey, I'm going to climb so I can catch him. So he's trying to climb here and he fires an AIM-120 right here at a distance of nine miles. And I fired at five. Now the question becomes, why did I close inside the 10 mile mar? The reason for that is because the bandit's not pointing towards me. So I know I'm safe, right? As soon as I see the bandit turning, I fire my missile and I'm turning away from him right i don't turn into the bandit right here you can see dive away from bandit as bandit turns this way i don't want to turn this way so that bandit's looking right at my ass right and so and so there we have the missile launch impact so my missile actually hits him at what was it the seven mile range that i fired it boom mock what, what, what is that? Mach 1.8 impact. Okay. Now, poor Alpha Gator just makes the mistake of being high when that missile's fired because he was trying to do something else. He thought the bandit was going to run. So he tried to go high to chase him. Um, honestly, I might have done the same thing if I'm being honest. I think he gets super unlucky that this AMRAM gets launched at him like this. Um, I think AC3 did a really nice job of quickly acquiring his bandit and just getting that missile off. And I think Alpha Gator gets unlucky because he wasn't expecting this. In hindsight, right? In hindsight, how can we avoid this in the future? If you're flying here and you see the bandit turning this way, right? Um, you should be coming up with a plan of action. Okay, like you have to see how this is going to play out. You got to look two to three steps ahead. So maybe right here, you know, you got to make the decision that, hey, I'm going to dive or I'm just going to go cold because we have a second guy who's already pressing this guy. You know, there, there was different options here. It, it didn't have to play out this way. Um, but, you know, that's hindsight and it's always 2020. So um, that's what happens there. Missile off from AC3 which hits Alpha Gator Mach 1.8. And he almost got away too. Almost got away. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's going to be the tag view for today. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to Alpha Gator, AC3, and Musolo for helping out with this video. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.